Yes, bro. Fine. Okay, let's start. Good evening, everyone. So let's continue with our exceptions. Okay. Yeah. We have discussed uh, what is the exception and um, what is the motivation behind exception handling and we have seen programmatically also. So what will be the situation like without exception handling? Also, we have seen that what is the hierarchy of exceptions. So, and here we have decided, uh, we have discussed what is the error and what is the exception and what is the runtime exception. So then we have seen this, there are two types actually, checked and unchecked. So we have discussed what is checked exception and what is unchecked exception, okay? Unchecked exception is nothing but it is not checked during the compile time. So it will be checked at the runtime only. So that's where like unchecked will come. So other exceptions, whatever is there apart from the runtime exception here, class not found exception, IO exception, all other ex ex exceptions are checked exceptions, means those will be checked at compile time itself. So those needs to be handled, okay? Now I have seen that. So how to handle the exceptions, okay? We know that, so there is exception has occurred and JVM is throwing that particular exception. So how do you catch that exception, okay? First way is by using the try catch. Okay, try block is the one. Okay, let me explain. Yes, so here is the one we have seen null point exception, right? So, try block is used here that indicates the error code. Okay, wherever we are suspecting some kind of error will come, that code we will keep inside the try block. Okay, means here, any exception is there, JBM holds that it will throw. So then we need to catch it. Okay, let's see what is the type. Null pointer exception. E dot print stack dress, okay. Okay, Bully, yeah, the type is. Okay, that's it like. So previously we have seen this, this particular code was causing the problem. That's why the program was getting terminated. So now let's see. So one way of catching the exception is by using the catch block, means try catch. Try, try block, catch block. This is also called as blocks in Java. Try block is the one which represents error code. So wherever we are suspecting some critical code we are writing, so always better to use a try block. And then followed by catch block. So whatever, wherever the exception has caught in the try block, that will be handled immediately in the catch block itself. Now let's run this. See here, what happened is, see null point exception had occurred and we handle that. We handle that, then the execution is completed. See if you see here, 20, 30, 40, 50, 20, 30, 40, 50. Means the second array, the J array is also initialized. Means it is properly executed all its code. So JVM did not get, program did not get terminate whenever the exception handled. So I have handled that particular code. So means this particular functionality is wrong and it will not perform properly, but all other functionalities will get finished. So that is the one like no uses of this catching the exception. So by using the try catch, okay. And 
what if my code is throwing like you no know, multiple exceptions so here we know that like null point exception and if it is and if it is throwing like multiple exceptions okay yeah it is there okay i thought like it's got disconnected okay and another one is the throws declaration means either you can handle or you also can throw set so if you see here we have handled the exception here itself we got the exception we handled here what happens is let me write another function static void method 1 okay control x let me put this block here okay here what i will call i will simply call method 1 here let me execute this function this code what happens see here this is same as like whether you are putting the error statement within the main method or it's an other method and i am just calling that particular method so in either of the case the problem remains the same see the execution for the jet array is not completed because i did not handle any exception here so instead what i can do is here throws null pointer exception okay this is a one way of handling it okay so it is no need to be handled within that particular method itself okay so what i will do here here some code is there i don't want to handle here itself so what i do here i will call i will handle here try catch null pointer exception e e dot print status let's say now see it handled but if you see here the error code is not present in main method error code is present on the method one so it's a kind of like it it is no need to be on the same method so the caller so here what happens is main method is calling this method one so here main method is a caller okay the method one is a kali who got called by someone so the caller should handle okay i can keep like even method 2 also like similarly static void method 2 throws null pointer exception okay what i do here control x control v here what i am doing method 2 see what or i am doing is the same actually so but different different level what are all the possibilities are there for handling In the real time the flow will be happening like this if you see here i have the main method okay i have the main method i am calling the method 1 okay let's see what is method 1 is having so method 1 is here no need of this one because it is handled it is handled means it is catched and handled so in that case throws is not required here two options like how we will handle whether you handle the exception or you throws jvm to handle it 
okay any of that can be done but if you throws to the jvm jvm will terminate the program but it's always recommended to handle by ourself but another thing is we no need to handle like you no know, in the particular place so we can handle at the main function level so what i do is my particular main function is there it will be doing another five child functions let's take but fourth child function is throwing some exception so i don't know being the main method how many inner functions it will be getting called so what i do is i will handle all kind of exceptions in the main method so that if any child method throws any exception i am in a good position to handle it okay it's a kind of real time use case let's see here so it started main method 1 okay so method 1 is calling method 2 and method 1 is throwing null pointer exception so either it can be handled at method 1 or if method 1 is also not handling let's take method 1 is also not interested in handling this what it also doing throws null pointer exception even method 1 also don't want to throw it so whoever is calling that particular function let them only handle so in that case main method itself can handle it that's it see here it handled and continued so the motive is there are the two ways to handle the exception one is you handle there or you can just throw it by using the throw keyword if you see here So method one is there. Method one is invoking method two. So actually, method two is having the problem. See, it is throwing the exception. So, but it is not handled at the method two. I don't want to handle in my method. So what I do, whoever is calling me, I will ask them only to handle. So method two did not handle. It simply throwed. So method one is calling method two. That's why method one is handling here. so it is catching the exception and it is processing that exception so this is where same thing like what are we have seen in the eclipse either any function like even that function itself can handle or else its parent means the caller of the particular function can handle so if the function calls are like multiple like four five inner function calls are there so anywhere it can be handled okay this is the one here catching the exception so but how we are catching is by using the catch block so try catch is the one way we are using to catching the exception here so then there are the conditions are there like okay also one more thing actually within the try there is multiple try blocks means like inner try you can call let's take my main function is there it is there in the try block completely i'm keeping because i don't know like what kind of calls might be there so what i'm doing catch exception e e dot print struct trace okay see if you see here already main function there is a one try try block yes i can see no proper alignment see if you see already main function it is having one try block and it is handling the exception in the complete way but still i have one more try block and catch block in between so this is nested try blocks means there can be so certain block level also we can have even though the complete function is handling in that case also like so there is a one this function main method is there it is handling all kind of exceptions but still there is some block of code is there which is i am sure that like no there can be chances are there so that one i can handle alone separately the advantage here is let's take you are not defining anything here and you are handling everything at the end of the method only so what happens let's see now what 
is this unresolved of okay i did not comment this okay fine let's see now what happens see here it, it executed before to the line number 34 okay see here what it is saying array x dot java class line number 34 is the problem so what is 34 is saying method one i called so next see the trace we can trace actually in the real time if any exceptions or errors are happening then line number 53 so it came here method to call let's see what is its implementation then let's see what is the line number exactly it is showing so line number 60 is the actual line which is causing the null point exception so line number 60 is this one so this is the code which is causing me so if you see the difference here i'm handling at the complete function level okay but the problem here is as part of this function i am handling like the multiple inner functionalities like i am initializing one array here again i am initializing y array here then i am calling the method here and again i am initializing another array here so totally four things are there okay if any one plus the problem is there so everything is getting terminated so it is also recommended that whenever you are feeling there can be chances where like more number of functions are there in the main function we can go nested try catch also so now what happens here is let's say yes see the execution is continued so you can see x array y array and z array is got initialized so means here the problem is here here itself i have handled so it is continued so this way we can define nested try catch so try inside a try so that is called like nested try okay this is also one more thing and also one more thing like there can be chances that like no my code might be throwing like multiple exceptions so in that case we have provision called multiple catch blocks let's see like how it looks null pointer exception exception e1 e1 dot print stack trace see here it worked it did not throw anything so within the try block let's take i have one try block but the code within the try block can throw multiple exceptions okay there can be like five or six kind of exceptions it can throw so instead like i can handle all the exceptions like this by using the multiple catch blocks okay this is a one way actually so each catch block will handle that particular exception this catch block handles only the null point exception okay like that if you want to handle means i know what kind of exceptions it can throw in such cases inside my catch block i will mention that particular specific exception and in another case i don't know like what kind of exceptions it can throw in such cases we will give exception if you see in the hierarchy level see exception is the parent class of all exception classes means it is a very high level so if you are defining high level means it can handle any kind of exception okay like this hierarchy let me do one more thing here there is a, there are the conditions are there here yeah i put like this what happens see here unreachable catch block unreachable because whatever the parent is there that should be the last one so the specific exceptions should be handled first and the generic exception type we should define at the last stage otherwise what happens is because this is the parent right it is having the capability to handle all kind of exceptions so this code will never get execute so that's why it is telling unreachable catch block means it will never reach there 
because everything will be handled at this point itself that's why whenever you are having like multiple catch blocks the parent means the exception is a sub parent i means this is the parent most parent should be defined at last okay this is the one we have seen like nested try and multiple catch blocks okay so in the multiple catch, catch blocks there are the conditions so each subtype should be handled at first then the parent means the exception as a generic type can be defined at last otherwise it will give the compiler error saying unreachable catch block so the same catch block in java 7 i think there is a new feature as introduced what it is is it is let me comment this okay null pointer exception and duplicate is already cut okay uh number format exception So if we see here, what I have done here, so instead handling like no, multi, instead writing like multiple catch blocks, I am handling within the single catch block itself by using the pipe single. So this has introduced in Java seven. So before to Java seven, so there was only mechanism is so if you have like multiple exceptions we are throwing, either you handle by single. parent or else you have to define each exception type so instead of writing that many lines java had introduced like with the pipe symbol you can segregate you can define a number of exceptions within the single catch block itself okay clear this is about try catch any doubts in this yes bro you can ex please explain uh, like really again one more time huh? yeah. okay fine so exception handling ways we have seen by using the try catch okay either you can handle by using the try catch or else you can define by using the throws keyword okay so means you are not interested to handle there itself and you are asking somebody who is calling you let them handle in that case is you can declare within that function by using the throws keyword and you keep quiet but whoever is calling that particular one so ultimately somebody should handle this otherwise what happens is program will get terminate so so that's one thing either you throw or you handle then then and there itself okay or like you throw there and you handle somewhere so it should be handled at one place any one place so that's the one thing and also we have discussed about nested try nested try means try inside a try so let's take here there is already one try block is there even though the parent is having one try block again i am having try catch inside the try block so this is called nested try block so the use case of this is let's take uh, there is a big function is there okay that is performing lot of functionalities let's take four or five functionalities are there 
so i suspect like no uh, instead handling at the parent level better to handle at its child level because if function 3 is problematic at least function 4 and 5 will get continued otherwise what happens is program will get terminate means function 4 and 5 will never get execute so in such cases so the some block level we can define try catch so this is called nested try catch okay and another thing what we have discussed is multi catch block means your particular function is throwing multiple exceptions means more than one exception so if you want to catch all those exceptions you can catch individually let's take um, this one catch null point exception i have handled separately let's take and one more also i can take catch arithmetic exception e2 see here like i know that like there are multiple exceptions are uh, throwing by my code so what i need to do is i need to handle all those okay in such cases because why we need to have individual means let's take like so operator should get the clarity what kind of exception it is whether it is a database connection issue or whether it is a network issue or like uh, there is a request has been sent from the customer like in case of uh, this one like gmail login itself let's take that as example you should know like what is exact problem sometimes the network itself is completely down so another time the complete gmail itself can be down and another time so what are the credentials you have passed those might be wrong so you should get to know the exact error so otherwise if i throw some generic error you cannot get to know and you cannot correct it so it should have the brief information on each specific exception so that's why in the real time projects all projects will be handling each exception individually okay null point exception i will take so let's take in the real time example as username is wrong so i will throw some exception i will give the message as please enter valid username or else i will display like invalid username so who could have seen like this message so that is the one in case a password if i give wrong it will give like invalid password or else sometimes what it will do it will ask for captcha means like some random value it will be print showing and it asks you to enter so if you type like wrong it will give invalid captcha so that's where why we should handle each ex exception separately is because of these things so we, if we, we are handling individually all the exception means we can provide proper information to the end user so that should be the motive of it so i will handle all my exceptions whatever i know individually and there can be chances because this is a parent there can be 10 functions i could have called internally so i may not know each and everything okay so checked exceptions i will tell you that one so in such case what i will do i will define one parent and i will handle as part of the parent all other unknown exceptions so that is the use case of multi catch exceptions okay multi catch means multiple catch blocks followed by single try block okay so and also from jdk 7 onwards what java has done is instead writing this this way if you are writing so there is it is looking like some kind of like ugly kind of implementation means more number of lines it is coming so if you are fine with this they have given this option so just throw like this so you handle within the single catch block itself all the exceptions by using the pipe symbol so here the message i will get it from here so specific for that exception okay if it is required here inside i can get it if message is equals to invalid username so you you give 
you return this kind of text to the user. If it is a username is wrong, so you give this one. If it is an alpine exception, you give some kind of text back. So all these things can be implemented here by using either switch class or if conditions. So anything can be done. So this is a, another condition like multi catch exception. So within the single catch block itself, handling multiple exceptions. So this is what we have discussed. Okay. Yes, bro. Yeah. Now let's see like the major difference between checked and unchecked. Okay. We have mentioned that checked exceptions will be checked at during the compile time. And unchecked exception cannot be checked at compile time. So if you see here, null pointer exception, it is the unchecked exception. That's why nowhere you have seen the problem. Now let me write another problem, another function. Right method three. Just to know dot dot print alone. Hmm. Method three. What I am doing here. So let's see, like I'm just defining throws IY exception. Okay. So I did not call this function anywhere. That's why I don't see any problem. Let's see here, I will call from main method. See, let's see, I'm getting some error. Let's see what is that error. See, unhandled exception type, IO exception. So this is what I mentioned. Checked exception means these are checked at compile time and those needs to be handled without any fail. You have to handle this. Otherwise, the program will not allow you to run. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let me put this particular statement here. See, there is no error. Why? Because it is handled here. And I will do one thing. I will comment this. See, the problem remains the same. Because the particular exception is not handed. So it checked in all the aspects, okay? One second, I'll be back. Yes, I'm back. See, in this case, it is still giving the compiler error. So let me handle the particular exception here. So what I'm throwing the exception here, IO exception, right? Here's a checked exception, IO, IO exception, E3, E3 dot, see here, now, there is no compiler error means I know that like, so during the compile time, all the checked exceptions should be handled without any fail. Okay. So all the checked exceptions should be handled. So that's where we can see, but uh, runtime exceptions, it is not mandatory to handle. That's where like wherever, like previous example, we have seen null point exception. Um, we did not handle, but still compiler did not throw the error, but whenever we execute the code, so the program got terminated, but the compiler did not throw any uh, error here. So that's where like checked exception, unchecked exceptions. 
So if you see database wise, that is always like connectivity wise, right? It will throw default exception. Okay. And if you are opening like you no know, any file handling you are doing by default, that will throw IO exception. So within the Java API itself, there are already existing functions, whatever you are calling from RT.jar. So there are some functions which already throwing some checked exceptions. So whenever we are using those functions in our class, we need to handle all those exceptions. Okay. So that is the one thing. And here, so IO exception. So instead IO exception, what I will give is here the specific IO exception means here I'm throwing the IO exception. That's why I'm handling that IO exception. So I don't want to handle means sometimes I may not know. In such cases, what happens is either you can use this one also. So which is the parent? If you see here, see no error is there. Either the same exception should be there or else its parent should be there. So exception is the one super parent of all the exceptions. That's why there are no compiled errors. Clear? What it is exactly checked and unchecked? What is the definition checked and the name states checked? And how compiler works on the checking? Yes, Paul. Okay. Now, let's see what is our next thing. Yeah, declaring exceptions. So, who can declare? So, this already we covered. Okay. Declare means I will not handle like, so I will give to someone. So whoever is calling me, they can handle it. So like by using the throws keyword. So we have covered try, catch, and now is the one throws one. Throws is the one that I just declare it. I will not handle it. Means that's instruction to any caller that I will throw the exception. So if you see here, um, method, three okay it is telling so it is declaring the exception hey guys like i may throw this exception so you people should handle it okay that's why wherever this main method when we call this one compiler forced us to handle it so that's where declaring so by using the throws keyword we will declare so in case of like if we are having like multiple exceptions okay that with the comma separated, you can declare all those things. So any, any number of exceptions, okay? So if I define like multiple here, let's take class not found. Okay, let's take. Now I'm using exception here. I will not use this. Let's keep this one. See here, it is telling class not found is not handled. So like this, so you can declare a number of functions and number of exceptions from your code. So whoever is calling that particular one, they need to handle that, okay? If they don't want to handle like each one individually, they can use its parent. So it handled both because IO exception and class not found exception, both are the subclasses of exception class. That's why it can able to handle all its child classes. Okay. That's the uses of this throws keyword for declaring exceptions. Okay. One more is how to throw exception. Okay. As of now, we have seen that, but how do you throw? Means either you have declared here guys like i may throw but in the code actually it is not there so we can throw like this throw new io exception so this is the one way like so simply i will throw from here so let me remove this let's see what happens see another access type io exception so whatever you are throwing here, generally we will define here, okay? By using the throw keyword. 
throw keyword is used just to throw the exception. So throwing nothing but just will create the object of that particular exception and we will use the throw keyword. So here two ways actually directly without reference you are throwing that uh, exception. Another is you create the proper reference for that particular object. It's the same thing actually. However we used to do it f a equal new of a. This is a one way creating. So if you don't want this reference variable itself, then use new f a. So just two ways like anyway. Now what I will do? I will exception. I will ex is equal to new. I will exception. So see here, I'm doing either that way without any reference. Now, I will do by using the reference variable. So only the difference is here without any reference variable directly you are throwing here like you have created one reference and you are throwing by the reference, but both remains the same. If you see here for throwing the exception from your class, you are using the throw keyword. So this is the one. If you see throws is the one declare declaration and throw is the one actually throwing an exception okay so this is the use case of this throw keyword so here is the one more thing like so whatever like throws we will declare and here we will throw throw new illegal argument exception so here like while throwing another thing is you can define any text okay so error while accessing io file so we can define that so whenever you will define one message that indicates clearly, okay, because of this, this problem had occurred. So this is the best practice to mention message, error message for all the exceptions. That is there for throw keyword and catch multi-catch. So already I have explained here. So I have handled for three exceptions by using three catch blocks. And also same thing. So whoever is invoking, so there can be five functions or six functions can be there. So each exception level you can handle individually or else we can handle all exceptions in the single place also. Okay. So anywhere, like however we want, we can handle. The procedure remains the same. Use that right catch. So let's take here. See here it is throwing two things here and it is throwing this one. So what I do? In the method to itself, I have, hand, I have handled this one. So in the main method, I have handled these two. So like this, wherever we want, we can define action. We can, we can handle all those exceptions. No need to be in the single place, as I mentioned before. So that is only the explanation here, catching the exceptions in different, different places, catching different, different exceptions. Yeah, this is the one order. So I have shown you before, right? So I have different exception before, then runtime exception down. So it is giving wrong order because, so it was giving compiler error. If you guys remember, unreachable catch block it was giving. So always you define the individual exceptions first, then you define parent at the last. So that is the way, same thing. We have already discussed this. Yeah, this is the one. So you're, you're defining with uh, throws, means you're declaring in P1 function, I will exception, that needs to be handled wherever P1 is getting called, okay? It's the same thing. So one place it is throwing means, another place whoever is calling that, they should handle it. It's nothing but, we have discussed that as well. Okay, this is the same catching exceptions yeah and one more thing is finally finally is a keyword which we are instructing the jvm that like whatever the case it is you handle the particular block of code okay let's take try catch finally this is the syntax always finally should be followed with try catch okay let me go back here Yes, here what I do is, file input stream, 
If s is equal new new file input stream of let's take like some junk example like anything you can take. Let's see what it is. Okay. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm just using this file input stream. So means I'm handling with the streams, file streams. So what happens in Java is whenever you have open means you are opening one connection for this stream, you sh should close that particular one. Otherwise, these things will not get garbage collected at any time. So these things will be remain in your memory for longer time. So there can be chances that out of memory error can occur. So any streams or any connection, like in case of the database connections or in case of like uh, TCP connections means via the network, so socket connections. So wherever you are handling such kind of resources, you should make sure that you will be closing those exceptions. I mean, you will be releasing those resources. Means like FIS that close. I can write the function here. So at the end of my try block, what I'm doing, I'm releasing the connection. Means once we do FIS start close means it is eligible for garbage collection and immediately that particular memory will get freed by garbage collector. So let's take here. So this is the right way to handle uh, IOS actually. Okay, so wherever we'll create any FIS or uh, database or uh, network connectivity. So all such kind of resources, you should make sure that you're closing or releasing all those things. Otherwise there will be memory issues. Okay. So this should be the practice. Open the connection, close the connection. Open the connection, close the connection. If you won't close, the resources will get blocked. Okay. And the memory consumption will go very high. So you understood, right? Why you should close this? If you're not closing all these resources, if you're not releasing these resources, there will be a lot of memory issues will be there. That's why we will do properly. We will create the resources. We will release those resources so it can be reused or that particular block of memory will be reused. So let's take what happens in my code. So let's see in this particular example itself, I have opened the resource, means I have opened the connection for that particular any database or anything. And I have executed here. So when it come here, yeah, when it come for method three, let's take, I'm not handling this one, okay? And also I'm not handling null pointer exception. Here. Okay. Yes. Leave about method three here. See here, what happens when I execute this one? So I have created one resource, okay? I did not utilize effectively, but let's take like even I have utilizing or something. So because it's already created, then I'm executing some kind of code here, here, till here everything is fine. If I see here, the me my method one is throwing the exception. So when exception is thrown, what JVM will do? directly it will jump to catch block. Directly the execution comes and lands here. Okay, but in between code will get skipped. So in this case, if you see my closing is there in further code, but it will not get executed because the exception happened before to that particular line. So that's why to handle these kind of things, it will get missed here. So what I need to do here, Again, whenever I'm handling this catch block, 
I need to release here FIS dot close. Okay, the error is there because give the global access for this. Okay, like that new file of okay. Just take like the arguments can vary. We will discuss uh, explicitly during our I/O sessions. Okay, so let's see. I have opened the connection here, but I did not handle. Uh, I did not close. So because I still need that. Okay, I might be using for some other purpose, but. Because of this exception here, this closing does not get happened. So these kind of resources will be living actively. So that is a problem. So for handling that, either I need to handle as part of that catch block, I can close it. That's a one way. But if we, if it is having like you know, there are plenty of catch uh, exceptions, we cannot handle. So otherwise, we can defend all these kind of things here. FIS dot close. So that's where the finally block comes to the picture. Go for input stream, file input stream. What is the Okay. See here, in case of the file, I will exception, see file not found exception. This is the checked exception. So those needs to be handled because this is a Java's default class only. This is not the class which is created by me. So like this, whenever we are using, right? Uh, let me declare with the throws. It's fine for me right now. I will see at the later point. Okay. Okay. FS dot close. So instead handling any individual catch blockers, now I will do define it finally. So finally is the one instruct into the JVM that like it will must execute. So whether exceptions handled or not, whether your catch block handled or not, this block will get executed without any fail. So that is the use of finally. So in case of like any database resources or network resources, IO resources, wherever we are using in our code, so we can make sure closing those resources in the finally block. So it is must executable block. So that is the uses of finally. So if here, like any statements are there. So final block is always executed. So it will not get missed. Whether catch is executed or not, whether it does not matter. So finally, will get executed for sure. If you want as example, let me give you New class, final example, main method, string s, try, system not ordered plan, yes dot, length, I've just taken this, catch, Null pointer exception, e, 
view dot and stack trace. Finally, switch on dot dot bundle and final block. Let's see what happens. What it is? The local variable. Okay, let's define what is the anything can be done. Okay, let's execute this code now. What will be the output? See, exception occurred. It is handled in the clutch catch block, but final block is executed without any fail. So whether exception happened or not happened. So let's see now. I will not make exception to happen. Let's see what happens. See here, final block is executed. So whether there is error is there or not there. So final block is the one most executable block in Java. So for releasing the database connections, or IO resources, all such cases, we will use this one. Okay, that is the use of finally here. This is the one. There is one more concept is user defined exception. So instead of using the existing Java exceptions, we can define our own exceptions also. Okay. How do we define is like let's take class, my exception I have taken. So it should extend the exception class. Okay. Then just provide one constructor. That's it. Constructor, one parameterized or non-parameterized. If you want to provide some proper message, then give the parameterized string S. Okay, so this is my own exception. So it is not present in Java. The name is my exception. The condition is it should extend exception class. That's it. How I can use that one is, so let's take, there's a sample test class, static compute. So I'm see, if you see here, throwing my exception, throw new my exception. How I'm handling is, see inside the catch bug, I can see my exception. That's it. Like, these are the user defined exceptions. So we can define our own exceptions according to our requirements. This is how, how we will define our own exceptions and handling our user defined exception is the same as other exception. Either for declaring a user defined exception, use the throws keyword and to handle that user defined exception, use a try catch, that's it. That's it for today's class. Uh, Chandrasekh, like, can you stop recording?